Another thing, Dr. Loeb, that um, I was wondering is, we had 3i Atlas in the first of July, okay? We saw it the first time, we noticed it in the first of July, we had on May already, but that was after the fact. And we have very often, and for instance, like the R2 Swan, this, uh, this comet that is around uh, the Earth now, or near, mm, it popped from nowhere behind the sun. And we have oftentimes asteroids that can be dangerous, and you know that just at the last minute they pop behind the sun because we don't have the clarity, we can't see behind the sun. And that raises one question. If 3i Atlas was discovered in 1st of July, and if it was an object that was dangerous to the Earth, and you, I mean, four months to react, are we prepared for that? No. Um, it seems like they are mm, not, um, you know, not enhancing too much that part, but we feel like we can trust them for security. What do you think about this? Yeah, I mean, um, in terms of um, preparing for a potential near-Earth object, um, the assumption all, all along for decades was that we need to search for objects in the solar system. These are rocks that are the building blocks of the planets that were left behind from the construction project of the solar system. So uh, we have a lot of uh, rocks in the main asteroid belt, and uh, every now and then, uh, you know, one of them gets... Uh, into a trajectory that can bring it close to Earth. And we want to protect ourselves so uh, because we know that dinosaurs were killed by uh, such an asteroid that, uh, that was uh, roughly the size of Manhattan Island 66 million years ago. So we are smarter than the dinosaurs. We can find them before they arrive to Earth. And, and so the U.S. Congress tasked NASA to find 90% of all the objects that come close to Earth that are bigger than a football field, 140 meters. And that's why the Pan-STARRS telescope was built in Hawaii. That's why the Rubin Observatory in Chile was constructed to find most of those. Uh, and um, the thing is that the thinking was all about objects in the solar system that move uh, around and we can forecast how they move because we see them. Uh, however, if you, you're dealing with interstellar objects, it's a completely different population that you have no alert uh, system to other than something like the Rubin Observatory that can find an interstellar object uh, as it approaches the sun. And it, it only surveys the southern sky, and we need a copy of the Rubin Observatory in the northern sky. We don't have that. So we're missing half of the sky in terms of the, the alert system that we have. And the, the, the issue is this is a completely different risk because uh, an interstellar object, you know, moves uh, with a very high speed. So you have to, res if, if there is a risk that it, it will come uh, and collide with Earth, you have to respond very quickly. Um, and uh, moreover, if it's technological, you, know, you can't forecast how it will behave. You know, so uh, obviously we assume that all technological objects uh, in our vicinity are human-made, but if something comes from outside the solar system, you don't know that. And uh, that's why it opens up uh, a completely new frontier that I actually discussed in, my, in some of my recent articles. And I call that, it opens a frontier of uh, discovery, of, uh, of um, a revolution in, in, in astronomy where we have objects that traveled for millions or billions of years before they arrive to us and we can learn much more about what lies you know in the in the milky way galaxy uh, we don't we didn't have that access before and uh, we can for example get close to these objects take a close up photograph that will tell us if it's a rock or a spacecraft also maybe land on one of them if it, even if it's a rock we can bring a sample back to earth and study the building blocks of life to see if other stars have the same building blocks of life as the solar system so there is a whole new frontier. I call it a revolution in astronomy that is associated with interstellar objects. And the most significant finding that we can have is of a technological object that you know is similar to the Voyager, Pioneer, New Horizons spacecraft that we launched out of the solar system. So another civilization may have been around for billions of years and they had time to reach our backyard. And we should check for that and not assume that it must be very unlikely. And I'm so... 
Yeah. I'm glad that you talked about that of Voyager because this is very important for people to think out of the box. I often talk about this here because if we were an alien civilization, if there's an alien civilization in other place and have the luck that to watch our Voyager, it will be alien to them, right? Exactly. It will be the opposite. It, we will be the, the aliens to them. And okay. that the object, the Voyager, will not move because we have no control anymore, will not move and will not send radio communications. And it's a bit uh, surprising to me, it draws the attention at least, that to, to watch people and listen people from NASA with high positions there saying that, oh, to me, to be an alien, it has to send radio communications or do some kind of extreme maneuver. But and if it was Voyager, it yeah. won't do that. Right. Can they and, and, block? And, and, I mean, it's really not so much just the attitude towards this subject. It's the fact that there is no major funding allocated to that. And, you know, there is a, a plan to use uh, more than $10 billion dollars in the next two decades to search for the chemical fingerprints of microbes. And uh, it just sounds to me like that's a very difficult task to find microbes uh, on exoplanets. Uh, it's just like searching for microbes on houses in your street from the vantage point of your home. You, you need to develop huge instruments to look at the neighbor's house and figure out if there are microbes there. But if there is a resident, it might be much easier to detect that resident because it may come uh, to your front door. There may be a tennis ball in your backyard that you find, or maybe even you, you will see a construction project in the neighbor's yard. So I'm saying it's much easier to detect intelligent uh, products uh, than it is to detect microbes. And we should hedge our bets and invest similar level of funding in both. So it's not just NASA um, in the way that it discusses the subject. Uh, it, it's a question of how much resources are allocated uh, to the research, you know? And uh, that is really important because if you are not seeking evidence, you will never find it. If you always insist everything is rocks, you know, you will never know how ignorant you are. And just to give you an example, the Minor Planet Center, which is the official organization of the International Astronomical Union to catalog objects near Earth. So um, on uh, January 2nd, uh, 2025, um, just this year, about um, 11 months ago, there was um, a report by the Minor Planet Center, which is the official body of the International Astronomical Union to catalog any object near Earth. And they uh, officially announced a new near Earth object Uh, and they called it an asteroid. And uh, then a day later, they realized that it follows the same path as the Tesla Roadster car that was launched by SpaceX in 2018. So then they realized it's not a rock. It's not an asteroid. It's a car. And uh, the only reason they knew that is because we know about uh, the objects that we uh, shipped to space. Uh, now, if this car was launched by a more accomplished space entrepreneur than Elon Musk, let's say from an exoplanet, we would never know that it's not a rock and you will see it cataloged by the Minor Planet Center as an asteroid. And this is my basic point that, you know, very often astronomers just assume the most likely explanation based on experience. And by the way, before 1803, it was thought that rocks do not fall from the sky. Only when, after a meteor shower in Liège, that was accepted when a physicist named Bayot uh, realized, yes, rocks fall from the sky. And now the comet experts are always saying everything in the sky must be icy rocks. There is nothing else. When we know that we launched equipment to space, so and we know that there are many exoplanets out there, you know, and uh, billions of uh, Uh, Earth-Sun systems from where you could have had technologies being launched to space. So um, I think it's just inappropriate to imagine only one possibility and dismiss and ridicule the discussion of yeah. potential interstellar technological objects.